Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Thank you for being here this long. Um, appreciate it. Um, welcome to the late <laughs> show. Late, the late I, late show. I, 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 I just... <laughs> Jessica early said, said she wouldn't make it the early one because she had soccer practice. And I, well, we have a, a session for the soccer moms too. Um, anyway, and she got to the early one. Anyway, welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, David, quick introduction in case people don't know you. Uh, I think for, for better or for worse, they, they do. At least here. Yeah. Nice to yeah. see you all again. I'm David Cole. I'm based in Berkeley. I've um, had the pleasure of working with Writing Project people for a long time, and this is one more example of that. Marina, what have you been up to? Oh, so busy. Um, should, I, like, should I introduce myself too? I don't know. Yes, you should oh, okay. Yourself. All right. Hi, I'm Marina, and I teach third grade in Westchester County. And I've been really, really busy because I'm in a master's program right now for educational leadership. So my semester is kind of coming to a close. Mm. But I've also been doing a lot of presenting with one of my colleagues on um, generative art. Um, so using prompt-based writing with our students to create images. And it's been a lot of fun. And it's funny that I'm here for the late show because I think I always would have been better for the early version. But um, tonight, the late nice show works for me. <laughs> Is there any way you could can we see any of those images your kids have been making? Um. Uh. Yeah. Let me. See. Yes, I can pull up. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Just in the on another tab while we're doing other. Yeah. Things, let me pull. You, let me. Let me pull it up. Get that ready. Great. And Chris Sloan came with a with a uh, a thinking partner design idea that we could explore together. Do you want to introduce yourself, Chris, and say what that is? Sure. And how far you got on it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media and photography at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. To, uh, so, and yeah, I was messing around with um, a GPT to help me think about, and yeah, to help me think about a question on an AP test. Uh, because I teach AP, and so um, there's a rhetorical analysis question always for AP English language and composition. And so I was messing around with just chatting with a GPT um, around that. Yeah. And I didn't know there was an early show. What's the talk about this early show? Do you went Sorry. already an hour? You've been so, on? So yeah, we've been we've been messing for an hour here. Oh, which means which is why Dave David may jump off. Oh, at yeah. Any point here. Paul's I, now, I, could, I could have come to that too. So Paul's now doing double headers, Chris. So you know he's got he's got a yeah. deep bench. So wow. so so many so so many teachers in particular say that nine o'clock hour isn't too late. Okay, for me. sure. Nine o'clock on the East Coast, six o'clock on the West Coast. Um, so. I'm experimenting with, okay, if we do it an hour earlier, will more people show up and happens? So we'll okay. see. And maybe one hour isn't enough. Maybe there needs to be a six o'clock and a nine o'clock. I don't know. But I'm sorry. Chris, are you ready to share a screen and talk uh, to me what you've yeah. been doing? Sure. Uh, Marina, did you want to share art first or? Um, it's up to you guys, whatever. If you're ready, Marina, go for it. Sure. Okay. I love how I can like miss like a lot of sessions and then I come and like, it's like a completely different place. <laughs> what do you mean? Are you, are you disoriented well, or a, is it making sense? There are so many changes. Um, hold on one second. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, my colleague and I, we, um, where are the kids? I mean, we did a lot of work with the kids on writing and well, you really just wanted to see their art generation, I think. Right. No, so, no, no. Okay. Show what you're doing. Don't, don't go slow. I mean, go slow. Don't, well, don't go fast. Yeah. All right. I could probably show you that. So um, we, we really started with the kids by talking to them about what intelligent is intelligence is and then 
dissecting into like human and artificial before we began any of this type of work. And we connected like third it with, graders. Yep, yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Okay. And then we connected it with human intelligence, actually coincidentally in our <clears throat> SEL program, the kids had actually looked at this um, um, image of the brain. So the, idea of like networks came up and a lot of the work that we were doing with the students was not just AI, but it was kind of finding the blend of computational thinking and, um, and AI. So we really included a lot of that type of language and thinking patterns into this type of work, as well as, you know, some more like structured writing protocols. So, um, you know, that's kind of how we started this work with our kids. Um, we used, resources from code.org um, so that they could train. It was really cute because a lot of the stuff came up, like, you know, they were thinking, they call it the AI and they were thinking that um, it's a robot. So we kind of had to do some work around what it what, what it might be. We talked about like clouds, so a lot of really great language coming up that's relevant to being a, a person living in like, you know, 2023. Um, here I am <laughs> with them. Here's the robot in the cloud thing, but I want to really get to the stuff that we did. Um, Marina, this documentation is coming out of your master's. This is no, 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 no. This is just this is just work that my colleague and I did with our students. My master's you, in educational leadership. Yeah. So you're just documenting this to sort of document your practice or share it with your colleagues or we did this with our students because my colleague is very into very much into artificial intelligence. She wrote a book and she's, you know, she wants to get it out. You know, she just wants to work with kids sure. and see what, you know, what six and I'm kind of a teacher that's willing to try things. So mm -hmm. and, and I was like slides the ideal came, person. came from a presentation you did together. Yes. Yes, we did this okay. presentation um, at NiceGate, which is the New York State Association for Computer Science. I, mean, I can't remember all the word, the letters that's, for that. That's cool. That's cool. And yeah. yes, yeah, and so, so Microsoft. Yeah, it's a NSC, NSCST. It's it's been a repetitive one. We've kind of shared it, and it keeps we keep keep adding to it. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, so here's like some of that computational thinking. So we did like pattern recognition with them, with like kind of thinking about the words that the prompts that we built, what came out well, what didn't come out well, looking for similarities. Um, we did some fun stuff like this with like pre precision of language. So <laughs> showing so them like the, what the comes up. Like, sam <laughs> salmon in the river. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. She found that on like, I don't know, Twitter, or Instagram or something. Okay. And yeah. we talked about that with the kids and they were, they like thought it was hysterical <laughs> and it led to like a really good conversation about like how you have to be really like specific about what you want to come out of your input and output. And I think I might've, yeah, no, I didn't get there too. Uh, so we thought about writing in terms of algorithms. So um, thinking about like how you're composing, like in the order you might be putting some of your choices in for your prompt and being specific with words. So you'll, you'll see a couple of them. Like the kids wrote stuff like a really cute kitten. And then we had to talk about like, well, what's really cute. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so it really, you know, it is around all this, but it's also about like writing and it gave me a lot of really to this in September, it gave me a lot of really good information about the kids as writers, um, also as digital writers, too, because they were doing a lot of this work typing into um, a PowerPoint. But, oh, yeah, so we got, like, more precise with the type of image they were looking for. And we taught them, like, we generate and produce, like, these different words. We kind of made our own little algorithm, uh, mnemonic device for like helping them to like write um, some prompts. Uh, here's an algorithm. So again, it's just a lot of that computer science language too. We read them the book on Grace Ho about Grace Hopper, and we were you know telling them how debugging came around. Which I don't know if you guys know, like do you know how de the term debugging was coined no i don't she was trying to fix a computer and there was actually a moth inside of it <laughs> okay ah. <laughs> i don't know i think that's really interesting 
It is. Yeah. <laughs> so with the debugging, we kind of thought of that as like, okay, that's like re revising and, you know, teaching them what are some like questions you might want to ask yourself. Um, there I am again in front of them. <laughs> um, getting the language to talking to one another. So this is not what I was picturing. Can you help? And, you know, did you write the type of image you wanted? Did you follow an algorithm? Are you using words that have more than one meaning? Because um, we had that happen too. I think one of the kids put something in like, they wrote like, um, make a baby kitten sleeping in a bed. And they got a picture of a human baby and a cat in a bed. <laughs> so this would be like more precise as a kitten. Um, but this is what they ended up doing too. So like, these are like just some of their first responses. Um, so here's that. Whole, that's their prompt there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's their whole, like the real, and we had to talk about well, what does real mean? And then mm -hmm. getting that into like a photograph. Um, and let's see. Here's the so, make a real cute kitten wearing ballet shoes. <laughs> Um, so what we did is we actually took, they did the writing and we took their prompts and we put it into Dolly and then we gave mm -hmm. them the strip for them to reflect on and kind of make decisions. So they actually did it. They revised the prompt a few times. Oh, so here, here she is again. This is that same one. Generate a real cute kitten wearing a small ballet shoes and also a small tutu in a background. Um, and oh yeah, Alana that's my colleague. She emphasized real because they, they were like, this is, this isn't real. And she was like, did you mean really cute or real? <laughs> um, so then we changed it to generate a photograph and she was more satisfied with what she got. <laughs> the student. Um, this is one of my favorites. So this is prompt one. He wrote a black a big black timber rattlesnake in striking position on a rock in the forest attacking a rat with a shirt that says oh food. And look at his pictures. They're like <laughs> mythological beasts, like Greek <laughs> mythological <laughs> beasts. And he, when he saw it for the first time, he was like, like his eyes like bugged out of his head. Um, but, you know, again, as we kind of did some lessons on like the writing and the precision and all of that. Um, he got something more that he liked when he finally wrote, make a, make a photograph of a black snake on a rock in a forest. The snake is attacking a brown mouse. There's a lake in the background. Um, so he got closer to, yeah, I know these are so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> um, it led, yeah, it, we did like other really great stuff. Like, no, no gender thing going on here at all, but go ahead. What do you mean? <laughs> no, the boy, the girl, the <laughs> Oh, but I well, the girl they all picked the, things that the they wanted to. We, they all picked things that they yeah. wanted to. We really, we actually asked them to focus on animals too. Um, mm -hmm. But like this one we had added in to, we ended up, <clears throat> she, this child didn't finish the prompt. And we saw like, okay, what it, what ends up coming out when you don't finish? Um, this actually was a really good opportunity for us to teach about spell check too. And um, how that's a form of AI. And um, when they completed it, they got some other things too. So I don't know. I'm not really, I kind of, this is something in our middle school they did. But um, well, yeah, this is just, like, yeah. So, sorry. What are you thinking now? Having, are you continuing, continuing with this? In some oh, ways? yeah. No, no, okay. no. We are. Um, we are using so we used it to create covers for our personal narratives um we used it oh this is a good one they created um super uh heroes and they were based on nocturnal animals but they were human superheroes right so well, actually some of them didn't decide but anyway they did some research on a nocturnal animal of their choice and then they built um a description of what they wanted their superhero to write and now they're working on like origin stories for that so are they coming to you and saying hey could we do this no not, not yet, yet. Okay. not yet i don't think they're like there yet. i think they just think it's like really 
fun when we do it. No, oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. And we're trying to like do in like oh. a very, you know, playful, responsible way. And um, but I got a lot of really good information about their writing skills for us. I mean, we like we did and um David, we, we, we still have to follow up one day on the writing revolution stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm curious about that. I mean yeah. 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 Um, I have another training in January, so but um yeah, the kids are doing this rating revolution um protocol too, as well as like some craft rating. So you know, got a lot of different types of samples of their writing in a variety of different ways. So it actually was good for me in that way too, as like their their writing teacher. Well. I don't even have to say, but that's amazing. And thank you so much for sharing it uh, the way you just did. Yeah. yeah I mean, I wasn't, um, I, I didn't yeah. say it as well as I would have probably done. Sorry. I, I don't know. I was kind of going. I'm through, glad you didn't but, prepare. No, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. No, we, you know, it's, it's kind of been a little passion project for both of us. And, um, you know, the, it's, it's really lent itself to a lot of creative writing, which, um, you know, Paul, how, how I said, like, you know, with the, oh, no, I would not use this for any of my creative writing. I'm pretty firm on that. But there's kind of like other ways that, to look at it in terms of creativity. So that's Absolutely. what I'm exploring, too. Say that. So that's what I'm exploring, too, for myself. I think. You're, you're exploring how to use AI in a creative way for your own writing? Uh, no, just with, with the students. With the oh, students. Well, okay. I'm doing no, it too. I, I just, like I'm doing it with them too. You know, I have my own. No, I know you are. I, I, I get it. I get it. I just wanted to clarify. Cool, cool. Chris, do you think you can follow that? Uh, it won't <laughs> be as entertaining. That was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I was just thinking that it's actually, you know, we talk about how students using specific imagery and, you know, specific details in their writing like that, what Marina was just doing like the more specific they got with their language the more the picture looked like you know the thing that they wanted to do so pretty powerful way to and engaging way to teach like use details use sensory details or whatever yeah you know? just, a di cool. just like, for me i felt like it was just a different way to approach like other elements of writing yeah so and um, I, I, as chris is bringing it up let me just, i wrote down the word passion project that you and your colleague have. And we see that with students too. Like some get passionate about this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, is, it, it, does it, is it infecting other colleagues too? Like, um, I hope it doesn't just stay with the, those of us who are passionate. <laughs> I don't know. Like, um, I, you know, one day, Paul, you, you, you know, and everybody, you know, Alana, I'm sure would have be, be happy to meet everybody because this is something mm -hmm. that you know she's yeah, done we'll a have lot to set up the time and, yeah 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 maybe she can come to one of these and um alana has done a lot is, is doing a lot of work to um you know show our staff everything that's out there like actually she had one of our faculty meetings um the, she identified there was three of us i was one of them that are using we're using different forms of ai you know in in different ways. And for me, I shared with colleagues about using Bing chat for lesson design and unit planning. Um, I just don't think a lot of times people also don't know what's out there um, mm -hmm. and what's accessible to them. And um, so we're, we're I th for her, it's just like baby steps and getting stuff out there for them to okay. try and play around with. All right, Chris, we're ready for you if, if you're able to okay. share. I will share a screen here. Let's see here. We hope you will. Uh, yeah, I'm looking for the screen that I want to share. Okay. Um, should be right there. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, hello. Yeah, uh, it took me a second to remember what application I was in. Okay, um, so uh, this is 
you know, this is a manufactured AP uh, writing assignment. And it's about rhetorical analysis, um, which is, you know, one of the big things you're supposed to be able to do. Well, it is like to be a better writer. I should. When you say manufactured, to, you mean it? As in it's an AP, it's an academic kind of writing, you know, um, you know, like. Okay. It's its own genre, I guess. And it is a school kind of thing, as opposed to, you know, inquiry writing, for example. So just trying to ground it in this. I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Setting. Um, so I did a GPT where um, I wanted to kind of talk about uh, a few things with the GPT. Um, number one, um, the AP folks actually after an exam is given they have like the the chief reader will give their own notes about what they saw and i thought oh that'd be interesting for my students after they write an essay to maybe they should dive into the chief reader's notes and and learn from it and you know then i realized like my students probably don't really want to read uh chief reader's notes it's not compelling literature for them uh and i thought um you know, there, there is good stuff, good feedback built in there. So I thought, well, could that some of the chief readers thinking kind of present itself to the students writing? So at first um, I was like, hey, I'm an English teacher and here's a prompt. So it's a this was uh, an AP. Uh, That's the former, AP prompt there. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. So it's uh, the one where uh, Sonia Sotomayor uh, gives a speech to the uh, University of California Berkeley School of Law in 2001. And, you know, she's giving a speech and the, the task is they're supposed to analyze the rhetorical choices Sotomayor makes to convey her message about her identity. So I just said, here's the essay prompt. And then I said, and here's the speech that was given by Sotomayor. And then I said, here's a sample student response. So Where I did fed, you get that? Is that from the that there's some that they release, but okay. I yeah, didn't yeah. use the I didn't use a released one. I actually went and kind of um I I said, give me an essay that's from not students. like this, but don't use that one. Okay. I don't know. They've got copyright okay, issues. So th this is uh, one that's very similar to another uh sample student response. Um and then you know, so um, one of the things I was interested in uh, is helping my students write better thesis statements for this kind of writing. So I just said, how would you assess the effectiveness of this essay's thesis statement? And, and um, oh, I also, Paul, in uh, AI uh, or in the, the, re the reply with AI tab, mm -hmm you know, you get this box that pops up that's the question and then a note about it. I wasn't right. really too sure how to use the note. So for what it's worth, um, I added, so this was the question I asked, how would you uh, assess the effectiveness of this essay's thesis statement? And then I also added this stuff, which is me paraphrasing the chief reader's notes about thesis statements for this particular Essay. And so you copied and pasted that into the. I did, yeah, and I don't know that's if it really. Fine. No, huh? that's, that's that's fine. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure I paid much attention to that, but anyway. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, and then um, so just in the comment, I'm distinguishing what followed here was the, you know, the response, and the response was actually you know pretty spot on, you know. Um, I think that could be helpful for my students. So I could imagine them on the first level of this kind of thing, um, doing a similar thing, like how can I make my thesis statement better for an essay like this? And um, getting some pretty substantive stuff, the kinds of things that I would tell them too, if I had enough time to tell them all that. And, and I would say the interest, one of the interesting things that I think was happening as I was doing this was, I think I was internalizing the um, rubric, for want of a better word, or or the the thoughts that make this kind of writing effective. As I was doing it, you know, I was becoming more familiar with the expectations, and I say that because, like, okay, and this is totally English teacher geeky stuff, but 
when I sit down with like a stack of papers, let's say, or, you know, like a bunch of Google Docs to read, but whatever, it takes me a while to ground myself in, you know, what people are doing. And so this front end work, I think, seems to be doing that, um, interacting, thinking about what I want to interact with, with the chat GPT seems to be doing that before I start reading their essays, which is how I used to kind of norm myself. So anyway, for anyway, that's a thought. That's totally fascinating. And a researcher needs to unpack that time. So <laughs> yeah. And, and then, um, then I kind of was mixing things up a little bit because then I thought, well, if students were doing this, like what kinds of things would they say? And, and I, you know, I'm imagining myself to be a student here saying, I don't really know what you mean by a defensible thesis. Can you explain what that, what makes a thesis defensible? And, and again, pretty good stuff that I got there. Um, and, and used a different mentor this time. Use the text. I did. Yeah. Yeah. So that it's was text. Cool. I'm stuff. just identifying. Keep going. Yeah. Yeah. So the first was the supportive English teacher mentor, and this was uh, text to self mentor. Um, and then, um, you know, I just was curious about the audience because any rhetorical situation, it kind of matters who you're talking to or writing to. And so I asked about, do you think the audience of law school people may have influenced her delivery? So this is a different branch of the of the response. Now, now you're not looking at thesis sentence anymore. You're looking at audience now. Yes. Yeah. And I think I went back. I think I'm, you know, like I'm doing reply to a with AI, AI to the passage itself, not to the essay. Right. I think that's yes. why it's a different branch. Okay. Um, so I wanted, I was curious about, I mean, I, I have an idea, but the idea that was given here was, you know, there were other things that maybe I hadn't thought about. Um, and then I thought again, back to the students, and this is back to the essay. I thought, um, you know, the the begin sentence beginnings mentor. Um, I just, you know, because the the adaptation of the essay that I did, which is was, a very text based mentor, but go ahead, yeah, yeah. But the I actually used I went out and used Chat GPT to redo the essay. And it gives you a lot of fluff, you know. And so I, I just said, I think that some of the sentences could have been written with more clarity, which is true of chat GPT. Um, do you have any advice about improving my sentence beginnings? And then, you know, I mean, it was pretty good advice there too. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that's kind of where I was with that today. You know, it makes me think about a lot of things, Chris. One of them is... Um, one thing I appreciate about hanging out with you guys, it reminds me very much about what it felt like to sit down in my rocking chair with my board across and have the pile on the left being ungraded and the pile on the right being graded. And I'd give myself my four days over the weekend to get through 40 papers or whatever it was, right? Um, and uh, are, you, are your students submitting electronically? And, I, was, and I, I imagine it's just a matter of probably months before Google or Microsoft Word allows, creates a teacher function. I saw Microsoft just released a bunch of AI supports for educators, right? Which I suspect, I haven't dug into it, but I suspect it's pretty generic, but it's gonna get increasingly targeted. And listening to you, Chris, describe, you know, what you were doing to kind of warm yourself up to the papers you were going to encounter and kind of reorienting yourself. I kind of said, oh my gosh, I know that feeling. Like that never left. But I'm wondering if um, you've never, you, you, you've been, you not had the AI ingest or look at a bunch of your students' papers and give you sort of a preview of what's coming? No. Right, that's not, that's not part of your workflow or the tools yet. Is yeah, right? yeah, so today I actually had them handwrite it in their notebooks mm -hmm. to start with. So what we're gonna do, uh, and this was the final, so we're gone for like- In, you know, in cursive or not? I'm in, just teasing. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just messing with you. And yeah. email, well, I think it's an no. email. <laughs> well, I mean, if you go online, it just opens up, um, No, you I, know, it's some fine. Inoc it's like it may not be them. So, um, so they hand wrote it and when they come back, they're gonna transcribe it into a Google Doc. 
Yeah. And they will, um, you know, get some feedback similar to what I'm thinking here uh, with this. But I will have also given them some feedback in the old fashioned way. And I will then have them compare mine with that. Um, and then the, the end goal is, can they try to do the same thing themselves? Can they try to articulate the rubric? Can they articulate the chief reader's notes about a specific essay and th through their articulation, I think, I mean, my, my hypothesis would, would be that they would so understand the task where are, the, where are the chief reader's notes in what you showed us here though? Um, what I, the only thing I did here was right here is where I paraphrased just what I teased out about the thesis statement. Mm -hmm. okay. So now I could have um, I could have just dumped the whole thing in and said, "Hey, here's my thinking about this essay," um, and and I think it would have it would have ingested the chief readers the whole notes, and maybe have gone to town with with that stuff. But I wanted to just focus on just like one part of it to keep it manageable. So when I got the feedback, it was like a little bit more targeted um i don't know but i thought i mean are you still interested in creating a chief reader gpt uh so yeah okay so that's that's an interesting possibility um because you could absolutely put you could absolutely put everything that's in the guide that's you know yeah um, but part of yeah. my process was like I was actually trying to think more carefully about the assessment that I have ahead of me. And I thought in my own mind, if I just put the whole chief reader's notes in there, I wouldn't think about like the thesis as carefully. Um, okay. So that was just me kind of geeking out a little bit. Yeah. Talk to me about how it feels to be moving back and forth between different thinking partners. How did you make those decisions? Uh, well, at the the English teacher mentor seemed to be the most um, likely candidate to give someone feedback about their thesis statement. You know, but and at some then, point you decided to do the 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 sentence one. Yeah, because that was like. Um, the question was something like, I think my sentences are a little unclear. So it seemed like sentence beginnings mentor would be more targeted towards that. And and it was. Okay. David, I, sorry, I, I'm just jumping around a little bit. I, can you explain what you meant by ingesting all of their papers? What, what, well, I was, you know, I think what I would we probably... Could, the, the technology could, abs could absolutely handle that. So yeah. I'm just wondering. Yeah, yeah, the technology can definitely do it. It has, a, it's, it seems to have so much to do now with the formatting and the UX that that we're working in, right? I mean, a lot of things can be hacked. But what I was thinking, and when I was listening to Chris describe how he was getting himself psyched up and getting mentally ready to sort of think about reviewing and commenting on student work, um, I suddenly was thinking, gosh, if I had the ability to if I knew, for example, that all my students' work were in Google Docs, and I, you know, trusted them as source material, and I think Chris, the 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 uh, the way you've troubleshot that with writing and then having them scripted, I mean, there are a set of things one could do to guarantee to feel fairly confident that you're not just dealing with plagiarism, right? Mm -hmm. but, but if the material were electronic, or even if it could be OCR scanned, or there was some way to sort of organize it, and there was an administrative function in that process that identified a student work with a student profile with a teacher view it's it's basically lms gradebook functionality right mm -hmm. so if you said teacher pre-work pre pre-work and scanning and you know and say go through with with key questions that you know that that, that when you prompt when you put the essay question to the class there are certain key things that as a shared community in that classroom you all know you're talking to and you could say 
call out six way the ways where this happened in a, in a in a good way or a bad way and give me examples and cue them and set up the links to this the, this the student work so in theory if i were if i were thinking if i were chris for a moment and i were trying to gear myself up to assess a whole bunch of papers i might say go ingest the, the 25 or 30 draft essays i've got against the following key questions and objectives call out places in the student work where this is addressed well or not and give me a hyperlink to it in the document and then i'd get 25 links and it would say here's where we found it and it would just cue me up to get ready to encounter the student text it also is a way that um it guarantees that as a teacher just as it guarantees with the student i'm not just relying on the ai to give feedback but i'm get i'm asking the ai to help me get myself into the student work and kind of do a pre-run on the work to pre-scan it and to summarize it. So I can bring my best coaching mind to an individual document with a student. Um, it's really just like a, it's so like a we, coach for teacher. Does that make sense? Well, mm -hmm. Yeah. We can do um, that now. We can just have them all publish on the same document. And then you could have, but the, what we don't have is the, is the criteria do you want to judge them with necessarily? Well, I mean, I don't have that yet, but I, I gave them a rubric today too, you know, mm -hmm. and said, by the way, this is- oh, You could have that, you're saying, uh-huh. I yeah. do have, yeah. Yeah, and I guess in lieu of having like full LMS access, which is coming, you know it is, it's, you know, it's all the adaptive learning features of being able to see where an individual student is, being able to share that data or not, but what you're saying, you have Paul, more and I, confidence in that than I do, but go ahead. Yeah. 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 But I mean, yeah. I, 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 what I hear you saying, Paul, is hey, we could create a, a we could create a mo a learning moment, kind of a order of operations in a writing assignment where everyone is in the class is going to contribute a paragraph, maybe it's anonymized, maybe not, to a single document, and they're going to feel comfortable in a social setting to do that with their peers and have it be transparently shared among the group. And then as me as the teacher, I'm gonna go through and provide some feedback on it and share with them the design of my AI that I'm gonna to use to help me assess my coaching. And it's basically creating the annotation experience you see in a, well, in now comment or in hypothesis or something. Right. It, it, it sort of you, it models the way an instructor might try to bring, bring so-called expert feedback into the conversation and models how critique can happen, I guess. But you're saying, Paul, if they all were in the same document, it could do that already. If we, if you wanted it, yeah, to. yeah, we we yeah. now have enough context that it can do that. Yeah, I guess I'm, what I'm what I'm what I'm trying to puzzle out in relation to that fact is, what would you need to do with classroom management to make that a transparent and useful exercise for the teacher and the kids? Given that it's not a private LMS. Here I'm giving you comment, or I'm seeing an individual's work, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, the old-fashioned way that I do this is, uh, and it's not as efficient as what I, I could help with. Is you know I do pay attention to like, oh wow, here's someone who has a really good thesis, but sure. that's time-consuming, and yeah. and relies on a little human error too, because you know sometimes I'm not as focused <laughs> on right. things as I am as others. So it would be pretty handy. To be sure. able to say, hey, I need to, you know, can you scan through all this stuff and say, here's a really good transitional, you know, sentence, you know, here's a really good thesis statement. Here's, here's a great piece of evidence that no one else thought of. And to have that as like, I do that, but I, I'm not very efficient at it. So I think having that help um, would be pretty instructive, I think, for students and also motivational, like when yeah. they see their transition as, yeah. as you know one of the models like that definitely pumps them up you know that also speaks to the thing i was mentioning with marina which is the uh idea of the writing revolution which is all based as yeah. i understand it on sentence on sentence construction and stems right and yeah and 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 the the, the taxonomy of increasingly the complex thinking conceptual sentence structures um, that's algorithmic, right? And so if one's going to use the transition on the other hand, comma, and there's compound information or subordinate clause information before and after and so forth, 
sentence structures can become quite complex, which reflect more complex thinking. And the thing I was struck by in the writing revolution approach, it was it scaffolds increasingly complex thought processes into sentence constructions. And that felt like a real algorithmic roadmap through writing. So to your point, Chris, that if there was a thinking partner that that cued off of a something as simple as a transitional phrase and then built out various levels You're of You're still complexity. sharing screen, Chris. Because yeah. I was I was just looking up writing revolution yeah, yeah, like yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah there's a, there, there, there are a couple of uh of academics and researchers like Hawkman and Wexler who drive that work, but it's it's okay. very much tied to and it, you know it's targeting, you know, kids in your Marina's age all the way up to yours and beyond. But it's very algorithmic, I think, and uh, that might be a fun thing to play with in terms of complexity and voice, because it is starting not in a totally open-ended way, but in actually a syntax construction that implies that springboards people into complex thinking. On the other hand, comma in addition to what I'm yeah. really thinking is this kind of thing. You know, it's um, it takes what AI is especially good at, and then springboards into very personalized expression. Right. So, like you could see and envision pretty easily um, AI has picked out a couple of things that worked well. Yeah. So again, like, you know, you could prompt for, Hey, I want you to look for subordination. Like where's a really good example of it. And right. so, um, you know, you could, where's a, where's a really good example of a simple sentence. Right. Yeah. So the student text so becomes the textbook. Yes. Uh, which I think is a real power because that's where I've always fallen short. I think whenever it's grammar instruction, it's like, how do you do it without doing worksheets? You know, yeah. how, so like student writing is the key. I think it's always been like, I, I hunt for those examples of good little nuggets, but that's time consuming and, you know, inefficient. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Chris, Chris, let's do this. Can we, can, um, what, you're saying that you are close to having a rubric. Well, there and is a rubric. And or, yeah. and or a GPT that does the, what did you call him? Master reader or no, you, you uh, call the chief him. readers. Chief reader. Yeah. Yeah. Could we create a chief reader and put all of your students essays when they're ready onto a one document? And then mm -hmm. have the chief reader find things in it. Yeah, I think that's, that? that's doable. Yeah, it's just I ran out of time this no. semester, but you know when they get back, oh. we're gonna do it. Okay. Hey guys, I was supposed to go, but this was too interesting. Yeah, yeah. So I no, decided thank to stay. Hanging out. No, it's great. It's nice to see you both. I really appreciate the conversation and the, the examples of what you're up to. It's, Thanks. It's really great. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around. Of course. All right. Have a good evening, all. I'll see you again here next time. Okay. See ya. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Right. Yeah, Paul. If you want to go earlier, that's that's okay. We can we can jump. Yes, I think we're good. Marina, good to see you and Chris. Yeah. Well. I know. Hopefully, I'll. Whether it's the early time or the now time, I'll try. Are you going to do it next week? I know people. Yeah, are yeah, we are actually. Um, yeah, I, I think we've invited Andrea Zellner to come on and talk Who's about that? some of the work she's done. She's a um, uh, uh, she's in the district office curriculum person, but we've known her for a long time. And she's in the DOE. No, no, in in Michigan. she's in Michigan. Yeah. Oh, and, okay. And she's written and helped to edit a journal about AI that um, will be interesting to look at. I think. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'll try. So early time, then, early time. Let's do it. Let's, let's aim for eight o'clock Eastern. Okay. Um, and, all right. Yeah. Chris, does that ever work for you to be an hour earlier or not? Uh, yeah, I can um, I can make that work. If I you know that. about it. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you both okay. for talking through stuff. Okay. Yeah. Talk <laughs> to you Bye. Thank you. Bye, Chris. See you, Marina. Bye.